Welcome back, my fantastic friends. We're going to do a fabulous painting, a nice warm painting today. But before we do, I want to show you some art from some fantastic friends of mine. This is Mary Van Tee's version of the Foggy Lake that we did back in uh, December. And she did the, she followed the tutorial and absolutely cracked it. Stan Harfield, he had a go at the moonlit night, the black and white moonlit night. And look at that, it's absolutely perfect. And then Sean Williams, he had a go at the same painting. It's absolutely stunning and, and fills my heart with joy when I see any of these paintings up there. And then Tony Milnes, he had a go and he did a perfect job of the master himself, a portrait of the master. And he's on Instagram, so go check him out. He's got some absolute fantastic drawings on there. Let's crack on. So, on this double prime pre-stretch canvas, it's covered, it's covered in liquid white. We're just going to warm the sky up with some Elysian Crimson. And we've got a little white spot, we're going to leave a little white spot there, just off centre and just above our eyes. And we don't want it bang on dead centre, else that'll, that'll disturb the eye. And then on the outer edges, we're just going to add some purples. Now this purple is mixed up with Elysian Crimson and Thalo Blue. So we're going to get a... And I'm mixing it on the brush, on the palette, so we're going to get variants of Crimson and Blue as I'm swooshing in this, this whim, uh, whimsical sky. Is that a word? Yeah, this Crimson sky. All right, and then we're going to come back, add more colour, blend it out. And it's going to look absolutely warm and fantastic. Now this painting is on my Etsy store. I obviously completed this a week or so back and I've, I've, it's dry and it's up there already. If you want to go over there and purchase it or have a browse about and have a look at some of the other works of art I've got up there and treat yourself maybe. But there's no obligation. I just appreciate everybody going over there and just, just having a bit of a look really. It's just... It's just a little bit of an outlet for us, that's all. So, we're just wiping the brush basically on the on the palette. Just basically cleaning it really. Just just removing excess paint out of the brush before we clean it. But we'll, we'll come back in and add some more colours. Get variants of colours. Variants of this purpley colour. And what I do, I, I don't make a, a big pile of this, this purple crimson colour. What I do is I just take a... a a bit of blue on the brush and then a bit of uh, the Elysian Crimson on the brush and I mix them together there and then on the brush I don't faff about with a palette knife mixing them and that way like you can see there I've got a blue streak as I'm painting some more paint on the brush that's that's that didn't happen intentionally but it works it's what Bob Ross would have called an happy accident and it works because it will just add a little bit more of a, an effect when everything comes together and everything comes to plan it just adds more more variant to your painting it makes it not so it's a, a flat dead old painting it, it gives a bit of character to your to your artwork and these um, monotone or two-tone or limited palette paintings they really do appeal to a, to a lot of people to, to um, novice artists and professionals alike it, it really does get you used to all the equipment and the and the techniques because you, if you're using limited amount of paint you're going to have to really work you know paint colors you're going to have to really work your equipment to try and create highlights and shadows with the same colors basically so it's it's, it's great it's really is fantastic now you can see down at the bottom i've just added a bit more thalo blue and i'm blending that back up into the sky i'm intentionally not going into that white spot because at some point we're going to come back in here and we're going to add a little bit of titanium white just to blend all this together. Just knock the camera there. It happens. It happens, folks. When, you <laughs> when you're waving your arms about with this big old brush, it happens. <laughs> okay, so let's get some white on the brush. So a different brush. I picked a different brush up with a loaded full of titanium white. Starting that light spot and I'm working outwards now. And this will blend with all the colours that are on the canvas. It will blend with all the colours on the canvas and smooth everything together. Bring everything together. We work outwards. We don't want to take any of that mucky colour back into the nice warm centrally glow part. And then we can put some more paint down here. We picked a bit of crimson up there. Again, I just want a lot of different variants of the same colours throughout this painting. Alright, I think that's done for the sky. 
So let's put some little clouds in there. Let's put some little clouds in there. So this is just a tiny bit more darker than the uh, than the crimson and the blue. I've added a tiny touch of black to this, only a tiny bit, just to just to darken it off, but not much. And this is so easy. You're just basically making zigzag clouds, just 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 zigzagging or straight across. And it makes it look like those little wispy clouds that are far, far high in the sky. Now, a bit of white paint on the finger. Touch right there, right in that sweet spot, and just circle your finger around. There we go. Just rubbing a nice little sun. You could add a tiny touch of yellow to this, but we've got no yellows today. And there we have it. Nice little sun. <laughs> right, with a Bob Ross blender brush. <laughs> you try saying that fast. Bob Ross blender brush. Okay, we're just gonna just tickle those little clouds, that little sun, very gently. This is like a, a really soft, like a, almost like a makeup brush, really. And it just really smooths everything out. Okay, now let's work on some little far away moors. Some little hills that are far, far away. So that dark crimson colour, and again, because we've got a build-up of white on the canvas and there's liquid white underneath everything else the more we tap the lighter it'll get and then obviously as we're working away from the Sun it's gonna get lighter anyway as there's gonna be less paint on the paintbrush and all we're doing is just tapping we're not sliding the paintbrush like we did with the clouds we're just tapping just giving ourselves a basic shape of some far, far away little hills. Now, back to that brush that we uh, we put the white on in the sky. And all we're doing is just really hitting the base of these hills. And all that'll do now is create fog and mist down at the base. And when we come back to put his next layer on, it will separate. It will separate the two and create like de depth and distance and planes in your painting you can see for miles when you create it like this and we can come as we're mixing the paint we want it to be a little bit darker so we can add either more crimson more blue or can even add a touch of the black in there as you probably heard me say many times before um, things that get closer to you get darker to you you know things that are further away all you can pick out is just basic shapes basic colors things that get closer to you get a little bit more distinct and have a little bit more of a of a deeper color to them on that blending brush there on this on this this one inch one I've just touched a little bit of white just to really fog up the the uh, the base of this moorland and then we can come back in with a dark color on the fan brush and just can bring this hill right in front of the other and it creates another it creates another layer we can even do it you know this one here as well we bring this hill down into the fog and just tickle all that together just like that I hope you enjoyed the paintings at the beginning of the video they really did well and it, it fills my heart with so much joy and pride when when people tag me in paintings that they've done and they, they, they follow the tutorials that I put up, I put up, I put up on YouTube, it, 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 it really does fill my heart with joy and, and hats off to anybody that attempts it because it's it it is it's not it's not difficult. It, it looks difficult, but trust me, if if I can do it, I'm sure you guys can do it. You know, all you need is the desire to achieve and, and to create and paint and with a, with a little bit of practice and a, and a little bit of determination, you can do it and you can start composing some wonderful works of art. And if you do want to give it a go and you do, you, you, you do give it a go, send me a picture. I, I really do love to see these pictures that, that, that get sent to me. And if there's any questions that you need answering, you, you know, just just 
my Facebook or my email is, is down in the description. You can you can send me a message and I'll, I'll endeavour to answer it. All right, now let's get into the foreground a little bit. So on this old butter brush, I call it a butter brush. I don't know what it is actually. It's probably a basting brush or, or you know like pastry brush or something like that. It works anyway. We're just going to add some of this dark crimson and a little bit more black into this this time. I'm going to create some nice indications of faraway trees. All we're doing is, is tapping down. Tapping down. It's it's like a conical shaped brush this. It's, it's, it's got like a sharp point to it. And it's probably not a fine art brush but it's it works I, I find it works and it doesn't lose bristles like uh, like some of the other brushes do and we're going to have a little bit of water down here a little bit of water down here so to do that we'll just grab some of this I haven't even cleaned this brush the reason why that is because I know the colours that we've got on the canvas are the same on the brush so I'm a bit lazy at times so we'll just lightly pull down, lightly go across, and we've got some reflections there. Now let's cut in a little waterline. So this is liquid white, just straight liquid white, right on the very edge of the knife. And we'll start where the lightest point is, right underneath that sunshine. And then we'll just cut in a nice little waterline. Make your waterline as flat as you can get it. Nice and level, parallel to the base of the canvas. Don't have it running uphill or, or down the hill. Okay. There we go. We've got a nice little waterline there. Just like that. I think we'll have some 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 proper glow in this in this little water now, this this little pond, this lake or probably a reservoir. So this is just pure titanium white now on the very edge of the small edge of the knife. I'm just gonna scrub in a little water reflection of the, of the sunlight. And it gets wider as it gets closer to you. So really scrub it in, pushing in nice and firm. And you won't hurt the canvas. You won't put a hole through the canvas with this knife. Unless, unless you ran at it at 100 mile an hour. <laughs> Alright, there we go. We'll add in a couple more little ripples here and there. Just to really br break up that... That nice water. There. Happy days. Happy days. Great, let's work on the foreground. What are we, 13 minutes in and we've we've almost completed it. Okay, so this is just some of that really dark crimson colour, but with a with a bit more black in it this time. On that old pastry brush. And just just as we've done before, like trees, but these these can be nice little shrubs and bushes. Some shrubbery. And we'll touch a little bit of white and that with that mucky colour on the brush that'll create like a, a dark, dark purple violety colour. And there and here and here and there, we'll just pick out where some highlights live on these, on these shrubbery. <laughs> I'm going to try and say that right one day. Just like that. There. Okay. You can just imagine your send going fell running here, can't you? Or, or you know, nice little fishing pond, or you know, stopping by at a local country pub. Right, I've double loaded this brush. You've seen me do this many times. Dark crimson and liquid white on one side of the brush, and we just roll the brush down, and just like that just like that, I seem to have got more of the highlight colour on, let's have a go again, there, let's put the, let's put the dark colour on, 
Of course, we need the shadow colour at the far side of the sun, and obviously the highlight at the, the close edge of the sun. Put a little bit more highlight there. Now you can paint you can paint tree trunks in a million different ways, and each tree is going to be unique. You can never get this wrong as long as you follow a few basic a few basic rules. Now we've added some more blue to this one. In fact, we've added a lot of blue to this one, but blue is a nice, cool shadow colour. And that'll sit further away from this tree, probably behind it, not getting as much sunlight. Yeah, your trees need to be obviously be, the tree trunks anyway need to be, be wider at the base than they do at the top, or they'll fall over. And if they've got wobbles and, and bends in them, that's ideal. We don't want to make, you know, telegraph poles. No, no, not on here. Right, let's go to the other side and put one in. We'll put a little baby one in. We've got Mammy and Daddy at the other side and we'll put a little baby tree at this side. Of course, the highlight needs to be on the opposite side this time. Just like that. Now, I've said this... A billion times things work better in odd numbers so if you're gonna put trees in you know unless you're putting a whole herd of trees <laughs> or, or what are they groves that's it groves of trees if you're putting a, a full grove of trees that's fine uh, but if you're only doing one or two trees either go for odd numbers either one or three I think after that after five I think you can just call them a, a, a grove yeah, I'm sure that's what somebody once told me they're called. Not herd or, or school of trees. <laughs> right, some really thin, some really thin black paint now. This is just paint thinner mixed with the, the black and the crimsons. And we're just adding some little sticks, twigs, branches, arms, whatever you want to call them, on these trees. And I start at the tree trunk and I just work my way out. Now, People have said, is it easier to pull from the outside towards the tree trunk or from the tree trunk to the outside? It's completely up to you. It's a preference. Whatever works for you, that's the way it should be. What works for me may not work for you. You've got to find your own style. There. We'll just put a few in. We'll, we'll put one or two more in. We're going to cover some of these up with some leaves. And it's got to be thin. We remember we've added a lot of paint on here now, so we need a, a thin paint. As uh, as we know, a thin paint would stick to a thick paint. There. Put a little bit more of a twig on this one. Need somewhere for that old Robin to come and come and sit down, rest his uh, aching legs. Just like that. <laughs> we've gone over all the nice clouds that we've put in there but we know we're there we practice making them if nothing else if nothing else we've, we practice making them now on this half round brush this is a lovely brush I, I, you can't go wrong with this one this type of Bob Ross brush we're just going to tap in some little foliage some leaves up here you, you, you can't really go wrong you just tap and tap and tap and it'll create lots of lovely leafy effects and this is a dark colour it's that dark crimson colour but we've added a tiny bit more black into it this time and then we'll come across onto this other tree we'll add some more in this one as well now you could make it winter and not add any of these leaves on you can make it full bloom full summer and add lots and lots on it if you wish it's up to you it's completely up to you there we go it just lives in your brush you've just got to shake it out that's all you got to do these trees these this sunlight all lives in your brush and your your palette knife you've just got to set them free 
Now I've just taken that dirty brush like I usually do and I've just hit the white paint and it creates a nice highlight colour of the same of the same the same colour but a, just a lighter value. And we'll just come back in and oh I caught a bit of blue on that one. That's that looks, that looks nice. Yeah, I like that. A bit of white here and there. Start to form like a rounded shape of a tree. Yeah. Happy days. Now if you do give if you do give this one a go, please please send me a photograph. I'd I'd love to see it. You know, it's a limited palette, a few basic colours, a little bit of equipment. What can go wrong? And if it does go wrong for you, you can just scrape it off and start again. That's why I, I love oil painting, because it's it's so forgiving and you can work with anything. You know, if, if, it, if, it, was a, if it was a watercolour, you'd, oh, you'd know about it if you make a mistake there. I'm just, a tiny bit of a light pale blue on the palette knife, just create a little bit of reflected light on this on this tree trunk here, really set, really set it off, really make it look grounded. Yeah, I do like this one. I do like this one. So let's sign it down here in the bottom, bottom left corner. A little bit of thin red paint, just initially. So if you did like this one, please give me a like, my fantastic friends. Leave me a nice comment and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. So until next time, my fantastic friends. Do take care. I'll see you all later. Happy days.